Thank you, John. Deputies say they saw a car driving erratically in downtown Cleveland Sunday morning. And when they pulled the car over, they found a man shot in the back seat, accompanied by a driver and two other men. 36-year-old Aaron Josh Davis lost his life while undergoing surgery after being shot Sunday. We were made aware of a victim had showed up or had headed toward the hospital on early Sunday morning and uh, actually was stopped by one of the patrol cars or communicated to one of the patrol cars that there was somebody had been shot inside the car. Davis lived here at 6360 Georgetown Road where investigators believe a party was held Saturday night. And many people attended this party. So we're trying to interview as many of those folks as we possibly can and make sure the truth, uh, we cover the truth. Davis was transported to a local hospital where deputies had to call in backup after they say three cars arrived full of people who claimed to know Davis and who were loud, uncooperative and upset. Davis was airlifted to Erlanger and later died from his wounds. Investigators believe the shooting may have happened in the victim's home. Georgetown residents are in complete shock. It's very rare. Uh, we, we don't have, you know, it's shocking to everyone to, to hear that something like this happens. Terry Beattie says he's lived in this rural part of Bradley County since the 1950s and is surprised how much times have changed. I mean, I remember when we first moved here that uh, no one locked their cars or the car doors over the houses. You know, we all left everything unlocked. But nowadays, the way people are, you just you have to lock everything up. A number of residents told us they thought the home where Davis lived and may have been shot in was for sale. Now, Captain Steve Lawson of Bradley County Sheriff's Office says it's vital to remember this is an active investigation. Autopsy results on Davis are due in the coming days. Well, he, he really wasn't an expert. He was just a, a con artist. A con artist who made off with more than 70 rare coins worth close to $40,000. It's obvious that he's targeting uh, coin shops. Uh, have already had phone calls from four different shops that he's uh, he had one in DeKalb County, one in Merida, uh, one in Fort O, myself, um, and that's just since this morning. Dalton Stamp and coin store owner Juan Lama says the suspect distracted him by falling over items in the store, asking probing questions about rare coins and also bargaining to buy money bags before saying he had to get a wallet out of his car and never returned. Dalton Police Department say they are taking this matter very seriously and ask anyone with information to come forward as soon as possible. Well, uh, the suspect's a black male. He has a shaved head. He wore glasses. Uh, in the Dalton incident, he was wearing a dark jacket, which he actually stuffed the, the coins into. And in the, uh, the incident in Fort Oglethorpe, he was wearing a black track suit. Lama says in 35 years of business, he has never had anything stolen from his store and did not have insurance to cover the loss of his 70 rarest coins. The same suspect has been connected to the theft of a rare $1,000 bill from a Fort Oglethorpe store, which have been sold for up to $30,000 to collectors across the country. In Dalton, Georgia, James Mahan, WDF News 12. If you're black, you got to be double on your job of tax or whatever because they're coming at you. Mahmoud Abdullah, a Chattanooga business owner, says he understands where the anger is coming from, but feels rioting is not the solution. That's the only way I think that they could just pull over the frustrations. Many, I'm not saying all, you know, just tearing up really what's not theirs anyway. The way I look at that, many people, you know, you shouldn't, shouldn't destroy buildings and all that. But I guess many of them look at it, what do they have to gain anyway? Everything coming, even in the black community, blacks don't own no way. Former Chattanooga police officers say they are concerned by what's happening in Ferguson and ask those who are upset here in the scenic city to express themselves peacefully. A cool head, uh, not to do nothing real crazy, just our city. And we love this city, you know. And I can remember what happened when Dr. King got killed, 1968. We was on 12-hour shift, man, and that was something here in this city. Jesse Jackson came here and... Father Brian Marish spent close to a month on the ground helping in Ferguson and believes only when there is open communication can the healing begin. Of course we say that some violence is acceptable and what we call rioting is unacceptable, but 
Violence itself is merely just a symptom of something deeper, something spiritually wrong. Merritt added that he wished he could have been surprised by the grand jury verdict and feels law enforcement receive too much support when courts and juries are involved. Now Chattanooga Police Chief Fred Fletcher told News 12 that he's confident our community members will not use this or any occasion as an excuse for violence. He also asked for restraint, respect and tolerance over the coming days.